Barring some unforeseen developments, the Falcons are going to be in the market for a quarterback this offseason. Taylor Heineke is getting the start, his second Falcon start, this weekend in Arizona against the Cardinals before the bye week. But Arthur Smith told us, we're going to reevaluate the position, but we're not going to play musical chairs. What that tells me is we could see Desmond Ritter coming out of the bye week against the Saints at home, or we could see Taylor Heineke. But whoever it is, is likely going to be the starter for the rest of the year with whoever it is. I've been on record saying it, the Falcons, and I don't think this is a hot take. I think many of you will probably agree with me. The Falcons are going to be in the market for a quarterback this offseason, and that quarterback could be the one we see on Sunday. Kyler Murray, potentially available for a trade. Well, the odds are Falcons 7-1, to one, plus 700, to land Kyler Murray this offseason if he doesn't play for the Cardinals. That's the fourth best odds, Chase. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, Kyler Murray, I mean, one of the most electric players at the quarterback position when he is healthy. Uh, I mean, we haven't seen a quarterback as good as Kyler Murray, assuming that he's still the same player coming back from this injury, which we'll have a chance, and we'll talk about in the next segment, to see him firsthand this week and as he makes his first start since coming back from that ACL injury. There's questions about kind of his leadership and stuff like his focus and his love for football. I've always thought that was kind of foolish. I mean, when you look at the guy, he's been a winner at every single level and most of his teammates and nobody has come out that truly knows uh, Kyler Murray and said that has been an issue. Like, oh, he doesn't care. Oh, he doesn't put in the time. Like, we're not dealing with a Baker Mayfield here who's got zero hours, hours of film on his iPad. Like, I think the guy cares and wants to be a fantastic quarterback just because he likes modern warfare too a little too much doesn't mean he cannot like two things at once. These guys have other lives, and I'd rather him be doing that than out at the club getting drunk every weekend. So I, I like Kyler Murray. Like, I think he could be a fantastic quarterback. Whether the Cardinals move on for him is a whole other thing, but I do think if if they do, the Falcons should be right at the forefront of those conversations. I mean, I, I think without a doubt what you said, I don't even think it's a hot take. I think it's just a true take. Like they are going to be getting a quarterback. Like if you, and unless Desmond Ritter comes, comes in in the last seven weeks, eight weeks, whatever it is after the bye week and is just outstanding. Uh, the fact the fact Arthur Smith can't take another risk on Desmond Ritter. He just can't like, he would have to show like over and like, he would have to lead the Falcons to the playoffs. Let's, let's just like, he would have to not only come back and be good, he would have to be good enough to lead the Falcons back from the playoffs. And for him to come back and even be the starter, you're assuming you're losing this week. So you're going to have to make up probably a two game deficit, probably beat the saints twice. And if he does that, maybe we're having a different conversation. I don't think that's going to happen. I, I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think if he comes back and starts, I don't think he'd beat the Saints once. And that's just, I'm sorry, Desmond. You just haven't shown me. You just haven't shown me anything. Um, but they're going to be in the market for a quarterback and they're not going to be in a position to draft one of the best ones. Now, personally, as LSU guys, I don't mind the idea of getting a Jaden Daniels there if he's sitting there. I, I also don't think Jaden Daniels is going outside the five top five picks. I think there's a lot of talk about Jaden Daniels right now. It's starting to get into. I, I think he's going in the top five. He's a top. He's a top five quarterback. Uh, and I think once the draft rolls around, you'll be talking about Drake May, Jaden Daniels, and uh, Caleb Williams going in the top five. So I, I don't see them. Then you're picking at what Bo Nix, JJ McCarthy, or Michael Penix. I don't love any of those guys as NFL prospects. Now maybe the Falcons do, but whoever they put all their eggs in this basket. It has to succeed for Arthur Smith and Terry Fano, or they could be fired, which is why I do think they're more likely to go out and get a veteran. So I do think Kyler Murray, out of all the options, is one the, one of the more exciting ones. And two, you know, one that could actually do something for the Falcons right now. Yeah, 2024 is very important for this regime. Uh, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about that, especially if they don't make the playoffs this year. If they make the playoffs, they'll have a little bit of a grace period with 2024. Maybe they'll be able to allow to develop a quarterback that they draft in the first round that we hope. Uh, but if they don't make uh, the playoffs this year, uh, you need to get a guy in the building that can win today in 2024. Now, Let's talk about, uh, I definitely don't agree with Jay Daniels' top five pick. Love the guy. Absolutely deserves a Heisman, but not a top five guy tomorrow. Um, with that being said, Cardinals are in a position to land one of Drake May and Caleb Williams. With that being said, they will either auction off that pick because they decide that Kyler Murray is their best option. They don't want to wait around for a quarterback to develop or they will be trading Kylo Murray. In both instances, this could potentially benefit the Falcons. This is an opportunity. You can get Kyler Murray, who has been a proven winner. He's a two-time Pro Bowler. You know, 
maybe he doesn't fit Arthur Smith to a T, but, you know, change your system. I mean, Kyler Murray's a dude. He's definitely, at his best, a top-10 quarterback in this league. Or you mortgage three first-round picks, Kyle Pitts, whatever it takes to go get Drake May or Caleb Williams. Whichever one I am all for. I, I, I think that, you know, whoever is in the position to draft Drake May or Caleb Williams and are fine, whether it's the Bears, whether it's the Cardinals, whoever, and they're fine with their current quarterback situation, Justin Fields or Kyler Murray, that's an opportunity for the Falcons to trade up and get one of those guys. And that's a kind of talent that you, you trade away all your picks. Uh, and even if they plan on taking Caleb Williams or Drake May, Take Justin Fields, take Kyler Murray, and you got two guys right there that are certainly better than what you've got in house. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the last thing that I want to say about this is when you look at the landscape of the entire NFC, just at the quarterback position, you know, we're really, if Kyler Murray has the right weapons around him, he's up there with everybody. I mean, Brock Purdy, we've seen him. I, like, if, uh, to me, Kyler Murray is better than Brock Purdy. Like, I know Kyle Shanahan's system makes him fantastic, but like, Kyler Murray's Kyler Murray's better than Brock Purdy. He's at least yeah, more absolutely. talented. Jared He's absolutely Goff, more talented. Jared Goff or, or Kyler Murray? Probably Kyler Murray. So I do want to say, I want to also mention one more thing that the, the bones are in place. The bones are in place for a good quarterback to just step in. We've got a very good offensive line. We've got weapons galore. We've got too many weapons. We could we could arm a small nation with all the weapons we've got. We finally have a defense, and and we still have more money to spend. This team, this roster is ripe for a good quarterback to come in here and make us legitimate contenders. Yeah, I mean, especially like like I said, which was leading to my point, just the the state of the NFC. I mean, the Eagles are playing great, great football, but, you know, they've got some holes. And listen, a lot of these contracts that they're paying, they're about to have to start paying uh, Jalen Hurts. Like they're going to have to start letting some of these guys go and let it, some of these guys walk once it goes to free. And you start, it's going to be a lot harder for them to have this loaded roster once Jalen uh, Hurts is – Milrow is what I almost said. Once Jalen Hurts is uh, making $50 million a year. You know, there, there's questions across the board in the NFC and the longevity of a lot of these teams. Everyone's hot on the Cowboys, but the Cowboys are the Cowboys. Like, they'll probably choke it, choke it away. <laughs> and I don't necessarily think, especially what we've seen recently, Brock Purdy is the answer in San Francisco. You, you could see them looking for a quarterback at the end of the year. I wouldn't be totally shocked about that. So the state of the N NFC, especially the future of the NFC, is ripe for the taking. you got the bones in place. And I think a guy like Kyler Murray doesn't have to be him, but I definitely think he's an intriguing candidate coming up after the break we're going to get into more kyler murray talk we're going to be talking about predictions for the falcons and cardinals this one could be ugly